I'm out of cookies. Better go make some more. To make ginger snaps, you start with 250 grams of flour, about a tablespoon of ginger, like that, and half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. There we go. And about half a teaspoon of cloves. Then you swish that around a bit and sift it to make sure that it's evenly divided. So we're going to get a big bowl and just sift it through so it becomes nice and divided. Yeah. Anything that doesn't go through, we we'll just chuck away. There we go. A microgram or two isn't going to make a difference. Right. Give that a final stir. There we are. And now we have to make the wet part. So we take that away. Take our other bowl again. Then you get an egg and just break the egg up and put in 250 grams of sugar and now we're going to make some noise over my trusty egg beater here so we'll switch off the sound while we do this So I've beaten the egg and the sugar. Can you hear it's still a bit crunchy? We're going to give it a little more in a minute, but right now we have to do something else. And we get back our bowl, and now we need a hundred grams of margarine. In the old days, we used to use butter. But um, butter's not very healthy for you, so we're going to use margarine. We've got 100 grams of margarine here, and now we're just going to slice it into the flour with the spices in it. I use a uh, cheese cutter for this. And depending on how fussy you are, you can either just use a knife or, um, or a potato peeler to make the slices nice and uh, thin. It does make the next part of it a little easier to do. There we are, there's a lump left, but we'll chuck that in anyway. Then, you fold it in, give it a rub, so that all the margarine crumbles together with the flour. Yeah, now this took me a minute. I thought it was going to take three minutes, but it only took me a minute. And now you can see that it's quite dry. And the margarine is evenly spread through all the flour. So, we've got a bit left to do with the, um, um, the wet part of this. We're going to crumble some yeast into a little bowl. 10 grams of yeast. Use fresh yeast if you can get it because I don't trust dry yeast. Then we're going to use some milk although some prefer cream. Let's say one and a half tablespoons. Get a fork and just dissolve the yeast in the milk or the cream or whatever you've got, yogurt or whatever, curd, doesn't really matter. Anything wet. And now that that's done, we put that into our, you remember our egg and our sugar? We're going to put that in there and we're going to make some more noise with our electric egg beater. So, back in the tick. 
There we are. That's done. There's almost no crunchiness left. Do take the time to beat it properly because otherwise it'll just be egg with sugar in it and it's supposed to um, bind together. So now we get our big bowl back and we just stir this into the batter. There we go. Doesn't look like a lot, does it? But I assure you, by the time we're finished and we've got our fingers all yucky, we'll be fine for this. There we go. And then you stir it around and sooner or later it's going to be all lumpy. And then you're just going to have to use your fingers. I'd say that time has come now. Then you collect it like this and this actually feels a bit sticky still. Do you remember from the bread rolls how I told you that there's a difference to flour? If you buy cheap flour you're just going to need more flour. Well, I think I bought some cheap flour this time so I might have to add a little flour because it's not supposed to hang on to your hands like this. We'll give it another 10 to 15 grams of flour and sooner or later it'll be a nice comfortable more or less dry dough. So now nice and dry you can see my hands are clean now but it is a bit soft. Now if you think it's a bit too soft Put it in the fridge for about a quarter of an hour. Right, it's out of the fridge again. Now, take a portion about the size of your fist, roll it out to, to about the size of your thumb, and then cut bits off like this and put them on your pan. Right? Just keep cutting bits off, put them on your pan. Let's speed this up a bit, eh? I just want to show you something else, and that is that most recipes will ask you to make little, even little balls like this. And yeah, if you insist on your cookies being perfectly round, like if your mother-in-law is coming to visit and you want to show off to her, by all means, do this to them, um, so they'll be nice and round. Personally, I find that um, having them a little misshapen doesn't really matter. And they usually end up pretty round anyway. So, that's that sheet done. Now, we're going to put this outside because I haven't got a fridge that's big enough and it's a good idea to let them cool just for the 10 minutes that it takes your oven to, uh, to heat. Then set your oven to 165 degrees right? and let it preheat. Into the oven they go. Now. Have a look at that. And the next batch are in. And I'm going to make, out of that batter that I showed you, I'm going to have about 150 biscuits. <laughs>